Inside Bobcat Football is sponsored by HEB, Bud Light, and Central Texas Medical Center. Down the sideline, inside the 40, they will not catch him today. On this episode of Inside Bobcat Football, we've got all the highlights from the Bobcats versus the Wolfpack. Also, sit back as we talk to Coach Conway about our Bobcat running backs. The Bobcats also have a new look for 2012, but for now, let's send it up to the club level. Eat them up, Cats! As always, Coach, we appreciate you joining us as we're here in the Champions Club level at Bobcat Stadium. Uh, this past Saturday, the Nevada Wolfpack, of course, were in town on a rainy Saturday in San Marcos. Early on in the ball game, the very first drive for the Wolfpack, Justin Awuji, who ended up with six tackles, a tackle for a loss on the day, intercepted Cody Fajardo's first pass attempt of the day. The offense immediately marches the ball in the, into the end zone, led by Sean Rutherford. Marcus Curry with the exclamation point, the one-yard touchdown run. What a great start for the Cats. It really was uh, a good play by Justin. Uh, one thing that happened through film study is Coach Nybar stole their signals from the quarterback to the receivers, and so the defense, the secondary knew it, and when the quarterback gave the signal, Justin and w caught it and was smart enough and, and baited the quarterback and made a great play for us and set up the opportunity for great field position, and then the offense was uh, opportunistic and punched it in to get us off to a lead. Uh, Sean Rutherford, in the first half, continued the tremendous performance that he had against SFA the week prior. In the first half, Sean, you look at the numbers, 13 of 16, 121 yards, two touchdown passes, added 18 yards on the ground. Against a stout Wolfpack defense, I thought the Bobcats senior quarterback was really good. Uh, very solid. Uh, you know, he's continued to play that way for us and has taken care of the football for the most part. We did have one costly turnover in the first half that hurt us, but other than that, uh, Sean's done a nice job. And, 13 for 16 throwing the ball is, is good numbers and what we need in, to be uh, efficient in this offense. Uh, speaking of offense, we'll stay on that theme. Isaiah Battle and Chase Harper need no introduction when it comes to fans or even the opposing defenses. They know who those guys are. Andy Erickson on Saturday was spectacular, added another threat. Andy, eight catches, 108 yards, had a score, added 136 yards in the return game. But I, I want to back up, as a play caller, as an offensive coach, a head coach, what does it do for your offense to have that extra weapon that other teams have to deal with? You know, for, for us, it takes a little pressure off the other guys. And, uh, you know, we, we've had confidence in knowing what Andy can do all along. He finally had a breakout game for us um, in the things he's been able to do. But we see him return punts every day, and we see him in practice every day. And, and so uh, we don't have to uh, not focus on Andy or focus too much on the others. And that's the beauty of our offense right now is that we can, we have confidence in all our guys. We don't have to just get it to one certain person. We, we can spread, spread it around and make people defend the field. We know what the defense had in front of them on Saturday. When you have Stefan Jefferson, the leading rusher in the nation, and then Cody Fajardo mentioned him. The quarterback for the Wolfpack came in ninth in the nation in total offense. There in the first half, I thought the defense did a nice job of eliminating the home run play and making the Wolfpack earn everything they got. Well, we basically did that all day, and, and to the Wolfpack's credit, they made some long drives. But we, we played good field position football. We made them drive it. We made them be efficient. Um, the, the drive right before half that just clicked in three plays was hurt. Uh, giving them the points to get back in a better position going into half. But we still played a really good first half against a, a very quality football team. All right, Coach, they're heading into the locker room. The Bobcats have created a buzz across the college football world ahead 21 to 20. We'll look at some of the images from the first half, and then we'll be back a little later. Texas State is looking for its second straight win with the Nevada Wolfpack in Bobcat Stadium. And the defense makes a huge play early with Justin Awuji picking off the pass from Cody Fajardo in the game's fourth play, setting up the Bobcats inside the red zone. Just five plays into the drive at second and goal. Sean Rutherford had just ran for six yards to the one yard line the play before, and here hands off to Marcus Curry, who slams into the pile and crosses the plane for his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. The early score gets Curry and his teammates fired up as the Cats take an early 7 0 lead over the favored Wolfpack. 
Later in the first, and the score tied at seven. The Bobcat defense again making plays as Deshaun Williams stuffs the nation's leading rusher, Stephon Jefferson, for no gain. And later in the drive, Jefferson is denied again, this time by Joplo Bartu for a loss of two. Now in the second quarter, the Cats down 10-7. It's pouring rain at Bobcat Stadium as Texas State has second a goal from the Nevada 2. Rutherford looking to give the Bobcats back the lead and he'll get his chance. Just when it looks like the Wolfpack has him stop Rutherford with an underhanded flip to Tim Gay who walks in for the touchdown, the first of his Bobcat career and Texas State is back in front 14-10. Ensuing Nevada possession, the Wolfpack driving, and Cody Bajardo, one of the best running quarterbacks in the nation, gets dropped in the backfield by Jordan Northfleet as the Cats rack up another tackle for loss. Two plays later, it's third and 13 for the Bobcat 34. Bajardo throws for the end zone, but again, Justin Awuji comes up with a big play, getting just enough of the football to tip it away from Aaron Bradley, and the Wolfpack settles for a field goal. Texas State up 14-13 and faced with 38 near midfield. Rutherford with time to throw and completes a 15-yard pass to Andy Erickson for a first down of the Nevada 40. Next play, Rutherford back to throw again and goes left this time to Deshane Milburn who spears ahead for 12 yards and another first down. Sean Rutherford is in a groove. Back-to-back -back first down passes has the Cats set up first and 10 at the Nevada 28. Off the play fake, Rutherford rainbows a pass towards the end zone to a wide open Erickson. That's the first touchdown of his career and it gives him plenty of reason to celebrate as the Bobcats pull in front 21-13. After a late first half score by the Wolfpack, we've come to halftime from Bobcat Stadium with the score Texas State 21, Nevada 20. Coming up next, we sit down with Coach Conway and talk about the Bobcat running game. First half highlights are brought to you by HEB. Right now, inside every HEB, certified meat cutters are working for you. You may not see them, but you'll see their work. All that fresh, 100% pure beef with nothing added but skill and devotion. Others may have guys stocking meat trucked in from who knows where. Is that fresh? No siree, Bob. This is what a real HEB meat cutter looks like at work and at play. No store does more to bring you great beef at low prices than HEB. In the Western Athletic Conference, we play up. It's how we define sportsmanship. And it begins with every player, every coach, and every fan. Because everything we do rises from the foundation of our character. Playing up comes from honesty, dedication, and hard work. Play up is sportsmanship in action, in every game, every day. That's what the Western Athletic Conference is made of. Play up. Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box puts all your favorites in one epic box so you can build the perfect dinner. The best part, how you fill it is up to you. For a limited time, get two medium one-topping pizzas, five breadsticks with marinara, and your choice of wings, Tuscani pasta, or four stuffed pizza rollers. All just $19.99. And right now, when you order the big dinner box online, score a free two-liter Pepsi. Only at your Pizza Hut. Make it great. How do you show your Bobcat pride? Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat Country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State. Your bookstore. The running back position is deep here at Texas State, and the coach is new. Let's introduce you to new running backs coach, Jeff Conway. Set, go! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, set outside. Good. Yeah, you there. You got it. there you go. All right, now swing. Run a swing route off of this. Because I am the only new guy, sometimes they just assume that I know things. <laughs> and there's a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of a slow transition in that regard, but really uh, they've made it easy because, you know, Coach Francione's coached a lot of years and, 
and Mike Schultz has coached a lot of years, and Dennis Darnell, and, and those guys have, uh, they've really made the transition smooth. Now, hey. stay here, stay here. Okay. Now, listen, it's going to be ugly on the route, that's okay. But don't advance towards the line. Stay here. I promise it's going to work out that way. Stay here. At Sam Houston, we ran a similar offense with um, a lot of smoke and mirrors option and, and uh, based around the zone read, and that made this transition easy. The number one regard in regards to running back is ball security, and I think it's a, uh, I think it's a way of life. I think it's not something you just talk about once in a while. I think you got to uh, hit it and preach about it several different ways, whether it's in the meeting room or on the practice field. And uh, I think everybody in the room, meaning the running backs, have done a great job of, of adopting that philosophy. Um, that was a real, compared to last year, that was a real uh, focal point for us is improving that um, in that area. And you know, so far, knock on wood, I think it's gone well. Got a hurdle across the 40, running right inside the 35 yard line. Down the sideline, 15, 10, they will not catch him today. Touchdown, Texas State. A lot of people just focus on Marcus. Uh, up in the stands on his running ability, but he's equally as good a blocker as well as a pass receiver. And so I think that makes him, he's working on being a 100% complete back, and that's an everyday process, but I think he's he's got a really good start on all three of those phases. Coach Conway's been really good too. Like he's coming from Sam Houston State, so he just had came off a very successful season last year, and so he has not a lot of knowledge about football, and I've just tried to pick up what I can learn from him. Out of bounds, now stays in the sideline. Down the sideline, inside the 40. They will not catch him today. 82 yards to the Bobcat touchdown. Terrence is fun to coach because every day he just wants to soak up uh, as much football information as he can. Uh, the thing that's also intriguing about Terrence is that he loves football. And, uh, you know, there isn't days that he doesn't come out and, and want to get better. And that's a that's a big part of being successful as a college football player is, is every day coming out and trying to be as good as you can be. And he certainly does that. He, he is getting better and better every single day. Tim Gay, who redshirted last year, has come on and, and really been a good addition this year for playing time. Robert Lowe is a true freshman from Waxahachie, and Robert has come in and surprised us because you always, you're not sure about true freshmen, how they're gonna adapt to the college game and the speed and the, and the information that's available. Uh, then, then Dexter Imadi has been battling an injury, but I think his best football is ahead of him. And then Chris Nuttall uh, did some things last year and continues to grow as a football player this year. The bottom line is I just named off six guys, and, and that's, a, that's a real good position to be in, uh, coaching that area. Bobcat Profiles is sponsored by Central Texas Medical Center. Not all ground beef is created equal, and the difference is this guy. The certified meat cutter you'll find at every HEB. Grinding the best beef in Texas, fresh in the store, several times every day. Not shipping it in from, well, wherever. It's so fresh, there's a darn good chance your beef left the grinder after you left the house. A miracle? No. To these guys, it's just the daily grind. No store does more to bring you great ground beef at low prices than HEB. Hey guys, this kick is for the win. Label's out. Here we go. Wait, what? 
Our proximity to the field creates a parallel connection between the bottle and the ball. The outward facing label simulates a smoother contact surface for the kicker. It's like magic, only real. Really? Yeah. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Second half highlights are sponsored by Bud Light. The second half begins with the Bobcats leading the Wolfpack 21-20. Texas State is 2-0 when leading at halftime this season and hopes to keep the trend going against Nevada. The opening kickoff of the third quarter is taken back by Andy Erickson who racked up over 240 all-purpose yards in Saturday's game. After a pair of touchdowns by the Wolfpack, the Bobcats trail 34-21 going into the fourth quarter. The defense looks to keep the team within striking distance and comes up with some key plays including Daryl Morris' tackle of Ricky Turner. Nevada faced with fourth and seven of the Bobcat defense asked to make another play. Fajardo fires a pass to the sideline for Aaron Bradley, but Craig Meger with tight coverage causes the incompletion and a turnover on downs. With the offense stuck in neutral in the second half, the Bobcats turned to Tyler Arda quarterback for a spark. His second pass of the game was a good looking one to Chase Harper who picks up 21 yards for a first down to the 45 yard line. Next play, Art back to throw and waste no time looking for the Cats' top target of the day, Andy Erickson. The Bobcat Jr. had a career high eight catches for 108 yards against Nevada. The Bobcats are unable to finish the drive and turn the ball over on downs. While Erickson had a career day, so did David Mayo. The Bobcat linebacker had a career best 13 tackles on Saturday, which tied with the team lead. And tying Mayo was Jason McLean, who also had 13 stops against Nevada, giving him 34 for the season, most on the team. The defense had its moments against the Wolfpack and held one of the nation's best offenses scoreless in the fourth quarter. But the Bobcats just couldn't come up with enough plays to knock off the Wolfpack, which managed to escape the upset. Your final score from Bobcat Stadium, Nevada 34, Texas State 21. Coach Fran, we just saw some video from the second half of Saturday's game against the Wolfpack. In the second half, after the Bobcats had put up the 21 points on Nevada in the first half, uh, it was tough sledding for the offense in the third and fourth quarter. Was that adjustments made by Nevada did the execution of our offense go down a little bit? Was it a little bit of both? Or, or what were your thoughts on the offense there in the second half? I think it was more our in, inability to get things done the way it needed to be done. Uh, I didn't notice a lot of adjustments by uh, Reno, certainly, for, as to what we were doing. And we had opportunities to move the ball. At, at times, we just uh, didn't cash in a couple times. And, um, you know, we seem to have gotten bad field position a lot in the third and fourth quarters sometimes, and so we have a hard time digging out of that once in a while, and we're going to have to overcome that. One thing that you've talked about when it comes to Bobcat defense is getting off the field. In the second half, there were some third downs that Nevada was able to, to pick up to keep their, their drives alive. What was your message to the defense after the game in terms of, of doing just that, shutting the other guys down, getting the Bobcat offense back on the field? Well, we, we were not very good on third down defense. And, um, and we had them in a couple times, awkward third downs, and let them out. And, uh, you know, you just you can't do that. And uh, we got to reevaluate, you know, what we're calling on third down and what position we're putting them in. And we, we've got to find a way to, to get off the field, and especially when we have them uh, behind the chains, which we had a, a few times on Saturday, and, and still let them out. Uh, there's enough times when you got third and two, or third and three, where you're you're not in as great a position defensively as as you'd like to be. But we we've got to get off the field in those situations. You tell me all the time you want to win every Saturday, but as you went home Saturday night, was were there the, those feelings of pride on how your team dealt with a team that's likely going to be in the top 25 when all is said and done? <clears throat> Well, I, <clears throat> I do admire the way our, our effort was, our, uh, our fight, uh, the way we, we held in there to the very end. Um, you know, we, we want to win those games, and uh, there was a formula and a way to win that game, and, and we, had, uh, we had it working pretty well for us, and uh, we just weren't quite 
ready to win a game like that against a, a quality team like Nevada Reno. And I, I don't know if they ever thought they were going to lose a football game. I think they felt a little pressed. But, um, you know, we're, we've got to find a way to make a few more plays and, and be a little bit more efficient. But uh, the, the effort, the physicalness, we matched their physical side of play. I thought that was really great. We were concerned about that going into the game, coming off a month of facing passing teams. Uh, all those things were, were very glowing um, responses to, to playing a team like that. All right, Coach, now it's time to head to the airport this week as we're going to be going to a place you're very familiar with. We're going to step aside, and then we'll be back to talk about the Lobos of New Mexico. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at the Cats' new uniforms. Hey, Bobcat fans, like us on Facebook and follow us at TX State Bobcats on Twitter. Keep up to date, learn new things, and win free stuff. Innovation. Exploration. Creative discovery. These are the trademarks of Texas State University. As the state's newest emerging research university, we're transforming your world one mind at a time. Your world, our research. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. On first down, Rutherford plays. They got him in open. Erickson makes the catch in stride at the goal line for the Bobcat touchdown. As I mentioned a moment ago, Coach Fran, the Bobcats head this Saturday, 5 p.m. Central, to a place you're very familiar with, Albuquerque, New Mexico. You were, of course, coach of the Lobos for six seasons. What do you remember, some of your fond memories of your time as the head man of the New Mexico Lobos? Well, I certainly remember the players that we were fortunate enough to coach. And uh, it was a very down program when we started, and, and uh, we were able to come back and take it to a championship and a bowl game. And, uh, a lot of great people there, uh, a lot of great support, w wonderful weather in Albuquerque. Uh, we, we enjoyed our time there a great deal. All right, now let's talk about some of the X's and O's. When you look at the numbers offensively for New Mexico, uh, they like to keep the ball on the ground. They average about 254 yards rushing per game. On the flip side, they've only thrown one touchdown pass all season. Uh, they've gone up against some very good defenses, Texas, Texas Tech, Boise State. Uh, what are the Bobcats going to have to do defensively to, to slow down that run game, that option attack? You know, um, their formula for success right now is they're trying to build out of the, the tough years they've had here for a while. Uh, and I can relate with where Coach Davey is because I, I took it under similar circumstances one other time. But they're trying, they're trying to shorten the game, uh, drain the clock, run the football, be patient, keep their defense off the field. Uh, our offense is going to have to be efficient and find a way to get some points and make them press a little bit more and get out of their patient game. And uh, that, I don't know if that's possible. They're, they're running the ball well enough. I mean, 300 and some yards against Boise State. Uh, we're going to have, have to find a way to fit on everything. A lot of what we did last week uh, from Reno will carry over, except they add, they add the element of the pitch to it. Reno really does, doesn't do that. It's either give it or, or keep it by the quarterback. And so. Uh, we got to defend a third or a fourth aspect if, if you include the pass, uh, which was a little bit different. New Mexico only gave up seven points to Boise State in the, the second half. That raises your eyebrows. Uh, what's the biggest thing the Bobcats will have to do offensively to, to put points up on the scoreboard at University Stadium? Well, this is a multiple defense that is in a lot of different alignments and blitzes and things like that. And so uh, we're, we're going to have to kind of handle that, manage that, not put ourselves in – uh, bad situations and get behind the chains where uh, we're responding to them more than them responding to us. All right, Coach, we'll have a great week in preparation, and we will see you in Albuquerque, 5 p.m. Central this Saturday. The level of football is different, the stadium looks different, and so do the Bobcats. Let's check out Texas State's sharp new uniforms. Really the number one question I get from student athletes on a daily basis is about uniforms and about how they look and about their swag. Um, 
that's that's what's on their mind. I mean, when it's not football, when they're not buried in their playbook, when they're not um, in their meetings, when they're not beating the crap out of each other in the practice field, it's about how they look. So that's very important. It's very important in, re in recruiting. Um, and you know, and Adidas has done a great job with us. Uh, Coach Fran's got a great relationship with Adidas. And they're seamless. Uh, there's not a seam on the jersey. They're ultra form fitting. They're hard to grab. Uh, we don't have to use a whole lot of double sided tape anymore um, to, to hold jerseys down. Um, these these jerseys are, are on them, and they're and they're top of the line. And everything we do here, I mean, from an equipment standpoint, you know, thanks to Dr. Tice, thanks to uh, Coach Fran. Um, is is first class because that's what that's what they expect out of our program and that's and they're giving us the resources to do it. Here we are back at the Champions Club at Bobcat Stadium. Brand Freeman, the play-by-play -play voice of Texas State football, joins us now. Brand, this past Saturday, the Nevada Wolf Pack in town, leading up to the game, there weren't many people who thought the Bobcats could compete with Nevada. The Bobcats did that and then some. Bill, they did, and a few players stood out in the game against the Wolfpack. You got to start with Andy Erickson, the junior wideout from Austin, Texas. Eight catches, 108 yards, and the one touchdown. Maybe establishing himself as a playmaker for this offense moving forward. Exactly right, Brandt. And Coach Fran talked a little bit about it, how having another weapon like Andy Erickson only helps the offense, causes more problems for the opposing defense. and. The thing I really like about Andy, he's the kind of guy, once he catches the ball, he's going to try to get everything and anything he can as far as yards after the catch. And the element that he brings to the return game was on high profile Saturday against the Wolfpack. Terrific day in the return game, over 100 yards in punt and kickoff returns as well. Yeah, over 240 all-purpose yards for Andy in the game against Nevada. A few players stood out on defense as well. Have to look at Justin Awuji. Certainly the interception, fourth play of the game. Uh, and the big pass breakup in the end zone late in the first half as well. And you look at uh, David Mayo and Jason McLean, 13 tackles each, three big individuals against one of the nation's best offenses. Justin Awuji, in my opinion, arguably his best game in a Bobcat uniform. And then you mentioned the name Jason McLean. He's a guy who, since he got here as a freshman, has continued to work hard, continues to get better, and it was highlighted his performance against Cody Fajardo, Stefan Jefferson, and the Wolfpack on Saturday. Now let's get to David Mayo. For a lot of guys, it takes them a while to acclimate to the Division I level, FBS level, of course, in this case. And Mayo is the kind of guy, since he arrived at camp, he just continues to get better and better. The, the sky's the limit for number 43 for the Bobcats. So a really good first half. Bobcats are up 21 to 20. Second half struggle. They did not score. Four games so far, just 17 second half points, just three in the fourth quarter. That's a trend that's got to change moving forward against the schedule. Now, one of the things you're concerned about with any inexperienced team is consistency. And we've seen that on a, a number of occasions. But we've talked about it, Brand, during the radio broadcast. Sometimes you have to tip your cap to the other guys. And I thought the Nevada Wolfpack started making plays on both sides of the ball that they weren't making in the first half. Well, up next, New Mexico. The Lobos coming off a loss to Boise State. They were down 25 nothing at halftime. Made a game of it. It was a final of 32 to 29. This is a much different Lobo team than the one we saw a year ago. That was one of the worst teams in the FBS. Yeah, Bob Davey has hit the ground running with the with the Lobos, no doubt about it. And that option attack, of course, that'll be a focus for the Bobcats this week. Coach Fran mentioned it, but it's going to be you know assignment sound, being sure tacklers. You want to use the boundary, feather the option, all those things that for so many years when we prepared for the Nichols Colonels, we had the conversation about how to stop the option. All right, Bill, looking forward to it. That's going to wrap up this week's show. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to tune in again next week. We'll recap the game against New Mexico and look ahead to homecoming and the conference opener against Idaho. Until then, I'm Brand Freeman for Inside Bobcat Football, reminding you that United, we fan. We'll see you next time.
Inside Bobcat Football is sponsored by HEB, Bud Light, and Central Texas Medical Center.